Thanks, Fives. Oh, man. How are you guys? How are you feeling? That was good. If it makes it, who, who did the spelling be? I'm terrible at spelling, if it makes you feel any better. Guys, I'm pumped to be here tonight. I like feel a little bit crazy right now. I just like chugged a Red Bull and I, I realized after I chugged it, I haven't eaten anything. So this is gonna be really fun. I, I, uh, it'll be good. I, I'm excited to be here tonight, but I, I was a little bit confused. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to preach about tonight and I, you know, typically we have a sermon series and this one was just kind of random. It was kind of like a one-off. So I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And so we put a poll out on Instagram actually. Well, does anybody follow the reason Instagram? Do you guys see the poll last week? Anybody reply to the poll? Yeah, lots of people actually did reply. And here's the kind of weird thing is uh, we put this poll on and somehow there was like a ton of people who had the same answer. And apparently everybody just wants to know from me how to riz. So everybody was like, isn't that crazy? Like, except for this one guy, I don't know if you guys can see it, but Neve just took a picture of his filet fish and then like replied to the poll with that. But everybody else just said how to riz. Everybody just wants to know from the rizzer how to riz. Come on. And so, I mean, I don't blame you guys. Like, it's 19 days until Valentine's Day, and like, personally, I'm ready. Like, it's, how do I know? Because it's like my favorite holiday. Of course I know, what do you mean? I'm, I'm ready. But tonight, just in one sentence, what I kind of want to teach you guys, actually, before I say it, I, why, boys especially, make sure you take your phones out right now, open the notes app, make a new note, and, and um, because we're going to be talking about how to get a girl to fall in love with you by Van Flamel. I'm so excited. Is there anybody who needs help with this topic in the room? Maybe you're lying. You're shaking your head, bro. Oh, give it like six months. Don't worry. How do you get a girl to fall? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. Like I said, make sure you have your phone out. But truth is, I'm, I, I like to think, like, I should get a second opinion. But personally, I like to think I'm pretty decent at this. I got the charisma, like, you know, like charisma. I got the charisma. Uh, I just made that up. But there was one moment about five years ago where I actually put in all my effort, all my, all my tears all my, I was gonna say blood, sweat, and tears, but it was basically all just tears into like this, just, just getting this one girl to fall in love with me. And eventually it actually worked. After lots of text messages, it's not, it's not a good ending, don't get excited. But uh, um, there was like lots of text messages and I had an Android at the time, so it was even worse. Like this whole texting thing didn't make sense. But throughout it, once she finally fell in love with me, she actually, this is so crazy. She wrote a bunch of poetry for me. And, and uh, but, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like meant for me. Like t I probably wasn't actually supposed to see it because um, she posted it all on this thing that none of you have used called Tumblr. Um, and, it, and, and she, she posted it all and then I found her account one day and this all came up because she started it by writing a birthday message uh, my birthday was this week, and so I got a, a reminder that five years ago she posted this. And do you guys want, should I read it? It's just a short one. It's just, it's just a short one. I got some longer ones, but she started this all off by, it, the title in big is, it says birthdays, and then it says, that was our first one, but I hope I'm there for the rest of them. <laughs> Isn't that good? Isn't that good? I, I have some longer, do you guys want to hear more? I've got some longer ones. I, uh, there's like a group of teenage girls right in the front, just like, who are dying to hear this. This is so good, this is so good. Okay, okay, context, we went on a road trip one time um, in the winter, and this is what she, yeah, it was like, actually, I think it was with Risen Leaders, it was like a bunch of us, but she, it's titled Road Trip, and it says, winter time in Alberta is unexplainably beautiful. It is early and the radiant sun reflects off the clean white snow. <laughs> Cloudless skies remind me of his bright blue eyes. <laughs> and, and that blonde hair 
mimics the dry grass peeking out from under the heaps of snow. <laughs> this is so weird. I've fallen in love with that guy in this chaotic life. Now as darkness falls, something shifts. And everything I haven't said is itching to come out. And when his, when his hand slips behind his neck, when he feels nervous, all I want, you guys are my hype beast. All I, all I want is his hand in mine. And when his eyes meet mine, the world doesn't stop. It just begins. Uh, it's kind of a bad ending, kind of a bad ending. Is this good? Is this good? I'm telling you guys, 19 days away. I, uh, I, just for context, like I said, this was about five years ago. And um, after we liked each other, I realized that she's actually a way better fit for one of my friends. And they, um, I, uh, so it's not a good ending, except I emceed their wedding last weekend. And they're happily married. <laughs> It's good. So I guess it's a happy ending for him, but not for me. Isn't it good though? Why Riz when you can get Riz? Get poetry wrote about you. Okay, I have a hot take. I have a hot take. We gotta keep moving. I have a hot take. Is it okay to compliment people even if there's like no like intention behind it? Like for is that okay? Okay, because like for example, I don't know about you guys, actually. What's the first thing you guys notice in a person? Just yell it out, just give it to me. Eyes, nose, eyes. Eyes, smile, that's cute. Okay, okay. I can't hear anybody except for these guys, but eyes, eyes, everybody. I don't know, I don't know. For me, for I don't know why, but for some reason I always notice nails first. Like if a girl gets nails done, it's the first thing I notice. And like, I don't know, I don't know why, but like I just, it's just, it's not like I'm like staring at people's hands. It's just that like randomly, it's just the first thing I notice. Like, like, oh, cute nails, no big deal, right? Like, hey bud, I like your nails, like no big deal. Um, or if somebody, or if somebody gets like their hair done, like it's normal to just say like, oh, you got your hair done, nice. Like, uh, or like, how do you say it? Oh, I like your hair. Like, how do you, you know what I mean? It, it's not weird, but I, I kind of was thinking deeply on this and, and like have you ever noticed that humans are actually the only creature that really care how beautiful something is? It, it's just, it's just like a deep shower thought that I had. But like, like, like and, and we crave the beauty too, like deep down we actually long for it. But if you think about like any other animal, think about dogs, for example. Dogs do not care how beautiful something is. Like dogs live literally in something, no, they don't actually. We <laughs> impose it onto them. They, they, they live in a crate or a dog house. They, you know, a dog in today's day and age might have like a really nice bed or a nice toys or really like good food, it's a dog. But at the end of the day, they, they like, we actually imposed all of that onto them. The dog doesn't actually care how nice their bed is or how nice their crate is. Half the time, if you have a dog, uh, anybody have a dog? I've got a dog, and, and he doesn't even use his bed. He sleeps just on the floor. I'm like, what are you doing? It's cold. Like, they, they don't actually care. We are the ones who care, and we try to impose our beauty onto them. And, and humans are literally the exact opposite of dogs. We long for the beauty. While the dog doesn't care, like, it, he's content otherwise, we literally, like, crave it. And when something in our life isn't to our standard of beauty, we either will turn away from it or we try to remodel it to make it more beautiful, to reach our standards. We are basically attracted to beautiful people, places, and things. Not to say that something that isn't physically beautiful isn't good, but we are just as in our human nature more attracted to things that are appealing. Anything in our life that we actually consider valuable, we probably also consider it beautiful. And when we discover beauty, we actually long to imitate what we see. What do I mean by this? Well, if you think about somebody you look up to or somebody you admire, maybe it's a, a leader in your life or a celebrity or something like that, you probably have found their beauty. And deep down, you probably want to imitate parts of them 
that you think are beautiful, maybe, maybe physically and maybe otherwise, like you admire them and you want to imitate them. Boomers or, or homeowners, I'm just going to call them boomers, <laughs> will do this. They will notice beautiful things in, in people's houses and they'll try and imitate them. They'll be like, I mean, you check Pinterest and see, like, like they'll, they'll try and find something beautiful and then they'll try and they'll, they'll actually not try it. They'll like long to imitate it. Or we actually do this too. We will only post the things on social media that we consider beautiful, that we will like ideally have, like make other people admire us through these pictures. And you're fully guilty. You take a million pictures and then you only post three of them because those are the ones that you find beautiful. Those are the ones that you think people will admire you for because deep down we want them to imitate us and we want them to admire us and we crave that they will see the beauty in us. Because of all this imitation, it, it just means that whatever we satisfy our appetite for beauty with will determine what we become. Genesis 1 verse 27 says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them right at the start of the Bible. So we are literally created in his image. Longing, that means longing for this beauty this beauty that only humans long for is actually rooted in us being created in his image. This craving for beauty actually proves that you are a child of God. Too often, I think, though, we take this appetite for beauty and we try and put it into the wrong things, whether we realize it or not. Our, our human desire, our human heart is designed to crave beauty. So let me ask you, let me flip it. What are you filling this craving with? I think all of us are guilty of trying to fill this appetite with things that will actually never satisfy our hunger. And while some of these things are still inherently beautiful, they'll never actually satisfy you. Maybe it's just material possessions that you admire and you just keep saying to yourself, if I just had this, if I just had this, I would finally be satisfied. I'd finally be good to go. Or maybe it's your physical appearance. If I just looked like him, if I just looked like her, if I just had one more pimple patch and just got rid of this one little pimple, I'd be good to go. Or it's a relationship. Maybe you're actually here tonight and you thought I was going to tell you how to get a girlfriend. It's not going to happen. You don't need a girlfriend. But... Maybe you're like deep down, just like, like if you really ask yourself deep in your heart, you're just asking yourself that if he just loved me or if she just loved me or if I was just with this person, I would finally be satisfied. Or I'm guilty of this, but, but you're, you, if you just achieved something, if you just had a certain level of success, if you could just finish this big thing, if you could just do something huge, if you could just be the next David Goggins, you would finally be satisfied. It could be anything. It could also be escapism. If, if I could just do this thing right now, I'll, 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 th this one's kind of hard because it happens in little pockets in our life. You have this really long day and you're like, okay, the only thing that's going to satisfy me right now is if I can just doom scroll for an hour or if I can just watch a movie or if I can just go on social media or, or, or just go back to this hidden sin or, or do something like that. Or it's just pleasure. You just want to have fun all the time and, and you are just waiting for the next thing that's going to satisfy that craving. We try over and over and over again to fill our hearts with these things. And like I said, many of these things might inherently be considered beautiful. They're not all necessarily bad, but the beauty that your heart is longing for can only be filled by actually exhibiting God's beauty. There's a guy in the Bible, his name's David, and he was guilty of this as well, but in a way, more extreme way. He had some, like, a, he has got this crazy story. He had, like, all this wild sin, and, and he um, was in charge of a bunch of people, and one of his soldiers, just Cole's notes, his, his soldiers just went away at war, and he ended up lusting over the soldier's wife, ended up committing adultery, and then that girl, her name's Bathsheba, she got pregnant. And then... David tried to finesse the whole situation. He tried to cover up the act by claiming that it was the soldier's kid. He tried a couple different things, and he ended up sending him back out to war right on the front lines and ended up getting him killed. And some 
scholars and people will argue that he literally created a cycle of violence in his entire family. That he, 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 he was just so broken and he was filled with pride and disobedience. And he ended up actually being responsible for a massive plague that killed 70,000 people, it reads. So this guy was like broken. He was trying to fill this void with everything and anything. But in the end, the good news is God still used David. God still had a deep relationship with David. And actually, this is proof that no matter how broken you feel right now or how far you feel from God, that he actually still wants to be intimate with you. He's jealous for you. He's like craves an intimate relationship with you regardless of all that stuff. David was extremely broken, but he was captured by God's beauty. At the end of it in Psalm 27, um, it reads, I've asked one thing from the Lord. It is what I desire, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, ga- gazing on the beauty of the Lord and seeking him, his temple. See, David was fascinated by God's beauty. And in the end, he wanted to fill his craving for beauty with God. He, f- he realized that's the only thing that would actually satisfy him. David and God's relationship actually can be kind of controversial, though, because at our standards, in our world, David was like this terrible person. He didn't deserve God or any kind of relationship with him in the slightest. David was so broken. He made every mistake in the book. But in the end, even though David was flawed, because he was captured by God's beauty, because he wanted to become more like God, because he was fascinated with God. God had such an intimate relationship with him. In Acts 13, it says, God testified concerning him, concerning David. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. This is a powerful statement because he's saying David is a man after his own heart. He will do everything that I want him to do. Sounds like I'm just repeating it, but there's power in this. Are you a man or a woman after God's own heart? Not because he's obligated, but David was actually fascinated with God. He like had this this craving and this longing for beauty, and he realized that the only thing that was going to actually fulfill it was the beauty of God. Are you fascinated with God the way David was? You can compare David to other people in the Bible, like the Pharisees, for example. They outwardly, on our worldly standards or or whatever standard you want to set, they actually were morally way greater than David. They had this outward expression where they looked like they were better. They were doing everything right. They were following all the rules. They had it dialed. Or at least that's what it seemed like. But in the end, they never actually were fascinated with God. They never actually exhibited God's beauty. They just did the right things. In our worldly standards today, it'd be like if you were just coming to church every Sunday, coming to Risen every week, reading your Bible, maybe praying, but you never actually got the point. You never actually exhibited the beauty of God and the gospels and just how, like, how, how just fascinating it is. It's crazy. Are you following Jesus based on a, a fascination and a craving for his beauty or solely just on the idea of good behavior modifications or good morals? At the end of the day, God is the only thing that will satisfy your craving for beauty. God is the only thing that can satisfy your craving. How would your life change if you began to actually get fascinated with him? If you began to actually just exhibit how beautiful he is, actually just see just how, how good he is, how much he loves you? What's it gonna take for you to 
begin to get fascinated with him. My goal tonight isn't to try and get like rid of your, your, your craving or your hunger for beauty. I think that that is actually a good thing. But my prayer for you is that we could actually start to redirect this appetite towards the only thing that will actually satiate you, which is God. You're never gonna find true, endless, like godly joy in your life if you try and satisfy this craving with imitations of what true beauty really is, which is God. One of my favorite authors, Samuel Whitefield wrote, you will never find life in abstinence from pleasure, but we find it in a shift from counterfeit pleasure to true divine pleasures. What's it gonna take for you to shift and exhibit his beauty? Obviously, my goal tonight isn't to teach you how to fall in love with a girl, but uh, I would hope that you would leave tonight just with like a little bit of a nudge to fall in love with God, to actually fall in love with God. Not just to have good moral practices or a to-do list of what to do every day to fit into this like cookie cutter of what you should do, but actually just get fascinated with him. Just crave his beauty because we must be satisfied with God. We, we must begin to seek out his beauty for real or else we'll just be like the Pharisees. We have to stop filling ourselves with this knockoff version. There's literally a battlefield taking place in your heart and in your mind of trying to fill this craving for beauty and you need to decide what you're gonna satisfy it with, how you're going to satiate it. And I'm not gonna preach much longer, but I, I just wanna pray for you guys, if that's okay. Would you guys actually all just bow your heads right now? Just take a minute. And I'm gonna pray two prayers, but first I, I just, if you're here tonight and you feel far from God or feel like you've been filling this craving with, with maybe not the correct thing or, or you just feel like this knock uh, on the door of your heart and you just know you need to start craving God's beauty. I just wanna recognize that tonight. And without anybody looking around, w would you just raise your hand? Would you just let me know? Awesome. You just have this, this craving and you need to feel, fill it with, with the correct thing. Uh, I just wanna pray for you guys tonight. You don't have to repeat after me. God, thank you so much for everybody here, God. And, and, and God, would you help us just to get fascinated with you? Would you help us to just see your beauty, God, as we go through our day-to-day, -day, God, as we go through our life, God? Would you just speak to us in, in, in a still, small whisper, God, and just help us to see your beauty? And, and I just want to pray one more prayer quick. If... If your first time here tonight or if you have never given your life to God or you don't even maybe know what this whole God thing is, but you just feel like you need to make a decision that today's your day to begin following Jesus for real. Today's the day. I, I just want to take a moment and give you that opportunity. It's really simple. I'm going to say a few words and all you have to do is repeat after me. But with everybody's eyes closed, if that's you tonight, would you just... Just slip up your hand. Just give me a thumbs up. Nobody's looking around. Awesome. That's awesome. Would everybody, can you guys all just repeat after me? God, thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross and pay for our sins. Today I declare that you are the Lord of my life. And I'm deciding to follow you. Help me see your beauty. Help me be fascinated in you. In your name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. That was so good, Ben. That was so good. If you made the decision today to commit to Jesus and to fall deeply in love with him, would you please consider telling any leader with the green tag? We would love to talk about that with you, to pray with you, to hear a little bit about what that